This is Real News Media TV, coverage you can trust. Please like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates. Teen girl among seven charged in public order clampdown in Otrios. A 16-year-old St. Mary girl was on Friday arrested and charged with indecent language during a police operation on public order in Otrios, St. Anne. The teen were among several persons who were held for offenses during the operation. At least four persons, including a 51-year-old Otrius businessman, were charged with smoking in a public place. Another seven individuals were charged with possession of an offensive weapon and one with illegal vending. The operation, which lasted close to five hours, was conducted along Main Street, James Avenue and Pineapple Main Road, during which over 50 vehicles were stopped and searched, and over 80 persons searched. The court dates for persons charged have not yet been finalized. Suspected suicide on Back Road in Portmore The police in Portmore, St. Catherine, are probing a case of suspected suicide. The body of a man identified only as Omar was yesterday afternoon found hanging by a belt at a section of an abandoned premises along Fort Augustus Drive. Residents say he was living at the location for some time and claimed that he had a history of mental illness. Man charged over removal of floodgate padlock at a Bogwalk Gorge. One of two men seen in a video breaching the padlock of a floodgate in the Bogwalk Gorge in St. Catherine has been charged. Glenroy Denton, 45, an excavator operator of West Prospect District in Bogwalk, was on Thursday charged with malicious destruction of government property. Denton was offered station bail in the sum of $100,000 and is booked to appear in the St. Catherine Parish Court on October 6. Allegations are that on Monday, September 26, the National Works Agency ordered the closure of the gate located at Damhead due to flooding in the gorge from the Rio Cobre. It is alleged that Denton and another man cut off the padlock to the floodgate and proceeded to venture along the roadway. An investigation was launched by the police, which included reviewing surveillance footage, and Denton was subsequently arrested and charged. The man who was seen with Denton is being sought by the police. Meanwhile, attorney at law Roger Davis is contending that a proof will have to be established that the government is the owner of the property. While it is not impossible to prosecute, it is usually when one damaged police uniforms and other government gazetted properties, but we will just have to wait and see, Davis said. Commenting on the issue, Patricia Harris, a counselor for the Angels Division, which covers the Damhead community, says a system needs to be put in place regarding access to the gorge. I should have gotten a key as there are residents in the surrounding area who have nowhere else to go and need access, Harris said. I don't condone wrong. In case there is an emergency, the authorities have to find a way to deal with the gate, she added. Stabbing death of Kingston Technical High student, a tragedy, says Williams. Education Minister Favel Williams has described the stabbing death of 16-year-old Kingston Technical High School student, Mitchian Campbell, as a tragedy. Addressing students on Friday at a consultation session, on the proposed national grooming policy, Mrs. Williams said she was saddened by the killing. She said the incident is tragic on different levels as a young life is lost in a moment of anger and another life blighted by what is reported to be a senseless act of violence. Mrs. Williams said the incident highlights the need for people to learn to resolve disputes without resorting to violence. She added that the Education Ministry has partnered with the Ministry of Justice to introduce restorative justice practices in schools to help students navigate what she termed a conflict-laden society. Students, this is a tragedy on so many levels. A young life lost in a moment of anger and another life blighted by what is reported to be a senseless act of violence. We must learn to resolve our disputes without resorting to violence. 
It's not that we are ever going to do away with conflicts, but what we want to learn is how we manage conflict, how we de-escalate conflicts, how we get out of conflicts, how we not become a part of escalating conflict to a point where you have violence and death. Carr tells a lawyer found the guilty of professional misconduct. Attorney at law Isaac Buchanan, who is representing incarcerated entertainer Vibes Cartel in his appeal against his murder conviction, was yesterday found guilty by the Disciplinary Committee of the General Legal Council of Professional Misconduct. A hearing in relation to the sanctions to be imposed on Buchanan will be held on October 22. Director of Public Prosecutions Paula Llewellyn Casey took Buchanan to the GLC after he accused our office of dodgy and a shady behavior in a news report. The comments were made in November 2020 following a request by Buchanan to have the defense in Cartel's murder appeal re-examine a cell phone used in the evidence during the trial. Cartel, whose given name is Adija Palmer, was convicted along with two other men in 2011 for the murder of Clive Lizard Williams. Buchanan was quoted in the article as saying the DPP is being very dodgy and shady and very deliberate in their action to continue to violate the constitutional rights of Adija Palmer. Despite the attempts of myself at the Queen's Council, we have been unable to get access to the cell phone, which we believe has evidence of tampering. The DPP in her affidavit had denied the allegations. In its decision, the committee stated that the parties agreed that there was no factual dispute that the words which formed the subject matter of the complaint were said. The parties agreed that the issues before the panel were what is the meaning of the words spoken and were the words spoken protected by constitutional provisions relating to the freedom of expression. It was further agreed that the documents that were filed by both the parties actually embodied the factual circumstances. When the matter went before the committee on July 18, the parties were invited to make submissions on Canon 5, which says an attorney has a duty to assist in maintaining the dignity of the courts and the integrity of the administration of justice. The committee said that the case was sub judice and was on its way to the Privy Council. Therefore, the words used by Buchanan breached the Canon 1B of the legal profession which states an attorney shall at all times maintain the honor and the dignity of the profession and shall abstain from behavior which tend to discredit the profession of which he is a member. The committee found that there was delay on the part of the office of the DPP in responding to several correspondences from both the local and overseas based lawyers representing cartel. Andre Earl Casey and attorneys Duane Green and Kimberly Dawkins represented the DPP, while attorneys at law Terence Williams and John Clark appeared for Buchanan. Bam Bori died pursuing his dream. A fervent and undying dream that morphed into a nightmare, the story of Scott Bam Bori, who was laid to rest yesterday after a service at the Shingle Hut New Testament Church of God in Woodhall, Clarendon. Mourners wept openly for the man who they say brought a pride to the rural community of Woodhall when he landed his dream job after his story of resilience amid disappointment was published by the news in May 2021. Bam Bury, who was working at a car wash in the community, had rude not being able to find the lucrative opportunities despite having a diploma in international shipping and logistics from the Caribbean Maritime Institute, now Caribbean Maritime University. Shortly after his story was published, he landed his dream job and began working as a stevedore loading and a floating ship cargo at Newport Stevedoring Services Limited, a subsidiary of Kingston Wharves Limited. I am overwhelmed. I now start to see where my life is heading. It's like I was blind and now I can see, Bam Bury told the news in May 2021. But on July 13, 2022, a tragedy struck. Kingston Wharves reported that Bambury fell overboard while performing stevedoring duties at the port of Kingston. The following day, his body was fished from the Kingston Harbor. An autopsy revealed that he drowned, the family said. At the memorial service, Sheldon Warren, Bambury's childhood friend, revealed he had found a solace in the fact that Bambury died pursuing his dreams 
doing what he wanted to do and not what he had to do. Bambury was part of my best friend squad that included Warren, Warren's brother and another friend. All three men were in tears as they recounted childhood memories, nurtured since their days at the St. Thomas More Preparatory School in Maypen. He was always respectful and always thankful. Even when he faced hard times, he knew where his friends were, and he knew we could help him, and he never called and asked for anything, but was still thankful when we offered to help. When he did the interview for the news and the way he represented himself, we were so proud, said Warren. Pastor Elisa Craig, officiating minister and Bambari's childhood friend, shared that a young man harbored dreams of uplifting youth in Woodhall and had reignited the hopes of youth in the community. Recounting their conversation days before he started his job at the Kingston Wharves, Craig said, he said, I'm gonna pull out some of the young people in this era the same way I was pulled out, and although he's deceased, he has given a lot of these young men in Woodhall hope. He's a true representation of hope that amid all that you are going through, God will come through for you, said Craig. Group Human Resource Manager at the Kingston Wharves Limited, Denise Samuels, told the news that despite the Bambers' short tenure, he was awarded by the company as an outstanding performer. The award, granted in April, came less than a year after Bambury started at the company. We had seen the article in the newspaper and invited him to come in for an interview. He was so excited. In fact, when he showed up for the interview, he advised us that he was pretty much ready to begin working the very same day, Samuels said. According to Samuels, the pace at which Bambury excelled on the job was proof that he was pursuing his passion. She said that a memorial service had also been held at the location where he died following the tragedy. Relatives said Bambury, though the disciplinarian, was also the favorite uncle. They eulogized him as a protector who was a family-oriented. Several tributes described him as humble, hardworking, and a respectful individual who never frowned when corrected. Bambury was also a past student of Clarendon College and the Bethlehem Moravian College. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates.